Hey guys, in today's video, I will be reading part 5 of Charlie Small Gorilla City. So, um, you might be wondering why my last video was posted one week ago. Well, um, it's because I was on a holiday, so, yeah, okay. Anyways, I'm back. So, this is where we last left off. So, this is where we last left off. Okay. Good boy. I said, patting his snout as he hissed with contentment. Time to get going. I, pi I picked up my rucksack and climbed onto the rhino's broad back. Whatever this land was called, I had arrived at a truly incredible place. As the rhino carried me across the golden plain with the sun shining and animals calling, I tingled with excitement. I felt invincible, ready to tackle anything. And there, at last, was the jungle. Less than a mile away, and glittering dark green in the sunlight. Come on, Rhino, I called, giving him a kick to hurry him along. Nearly there. We galloped full pelt down a gentle slope towards the first fringe of trees. Now I felt we were getting somewhere. With any luck, the rhino could plow straight through the jungle like a bulldozer. When I got to the other side, I might find a path that would lead me back home. Nothing could go wrong now. But then the grasses in front of us began to rustle like crackling flames. Something was lurking within them. Something huge. The grasses waved frantically back and forth. And suddenly, rising like a monster from the depths, a massive snake was towering over us. Snake bite. The serpent glowed, iridescent in the sunlight. Colors pulsed across its skin like electricity. Purples and greens and yellows. The snake's body was as thick as a car's tire, its head as large as a stallion's. The steam-powered rhino stopped in his tracks and grunted, hunching his back and pawing the ground with his foreleg. Carefully, the snake and the rhino circled each other, waiting for the right moment to strike. I had a distinct impression that these two animals had met before and had unfinished business to attend to. I decided that I definitely didn't want to be stuck on the rhino's back while the two giant beasts fought, and I started looking frantically around for a hiding place. But I was too late. The serpent, hissing like the air brakes of a huge lorry, spotted me on the rhino's back and started coiling and writhing in ecstasy. It had clearly decided that I was some kind of rare treat and was determined not to miss this opportunity to have a bite. The steam-powered rhino hissed back and shot a boiling hot jet of steam from his nostrils. The snake reared out of the way, whipped its head to the left, and struck at me with lightning speed. I tried to split from the rhino's back, but the snake was too quick, and I felt myself being hoisted into the air. One of its fangs, dripping a green and deadly poison, was hooked through the belt of my jeans. That was close, I thought, when the serpent flicked me high in the air. Then I realized I was tumbling straight back into his gaping mouth. Help! I yelled. This was it. I was doomed. But just as I thought my adventure would end with me floating in the digestive juices of a long tube of muscle and poison, the rhino struck. The snake was knocked sideways and my faithful friend hit it full charge in the stomach. At least, I think it was a stomach. It's sort of hard to tell which bit is which on a snake. I dropped to the ground, landing quite comfortably on a huge springy fur. Then I rolled under, under its wide sleeves, leaves for a shelter, and my heart beating fit to burst, 
watch the most terrible battle take place. A fight to the death. The snake fought back, but its fangs scraped uselessly <coughs> against the rhino's metal side. The sound was like the screech of fingernails being scratched across a blackboard. It made my spine shudder. And then the rhino charged once more, snorting and bellowing, sl slamming the snake back into a tree with incredible force. Come on, rhino! I yelled as he butted and bullied the serpent across the scrubland. The snake was surely done for now. It lay stunned and gasping for breath against the tree, and I could see that one more strike would bring an end to its rhino ambushing days. But then, disaster! As the rhino smashed into the snake again, with a blow that would surely have ripped it apart, his steel horn sliced, sliced deep into the tree's trunk and stuck fast. Desperately, the steam-powered rhino tried to pull himself free. The whole tree shuddered with the effort, but the metal beast remained stuck. Seizing its chance, the battered snake darted under the, under the rhino's stomach and up over his back, quickly encircling him in a, in a coil after glistening coil of rippling muscled body. With one huge effort, the rhino ripped his horn from the tree, but it was all too late. No! I cried and rushed to help my friend, but the snake struck out at me, spitting poison from its fangs, and I could only watch in horror as it tightened its hold on the steam-powered rhinoceros and started to squeeze with all its formidable strength. The rhino's metal body screeched in protest as it started to buckle under the pressure. Fight, rhino, fight! I yelled. There was little else I could do, and as if in slow motion, the rhino gradually collapsed, his sides crushed under the snake's mighty coils. I knew that he had lost the battle and that the serpent would then turn its deadly attention to me. But the rhino had one last trick. As the serpent squeezed him like a living car crusher, the rhino's therm thermostat flicked to boiling hot. His metal flanks flushed suddenly red with the heat. The snake screamed in pain but couldn't let go. It knew the rhino still had enough strength to lunge with his deadly horn. So the snake gripped, and the rhino grew hotter and hotter, his sides glowing like a hot plate, searing the snake to his metal skin like a rash of bacon to a frying pan. The snake, smoking and cooked to a turn, gasped its last breath. But the poor old rhino's workings had gone beyond the point of no return. With a terrible shudder, the poor crushed animal exploded. I dived back under the fern as bits of metal, <coughs> piping, and lumps of snake rained down. Then a large glass marble dropped from the sky and rolled in front of me. I turned it over and saw that it, wa it was one of the steam-powered rhinoceros' glass eyes. I bit my lip to keep my eyes from watering as I put it in my bag. It was a terrible end to my adventure with such a brave and incredible creature. But at least I had something to remember him by and prove that he was real. Bits of metal continued to fall and the ground was soon covered in shards of red hop shrapnel. Suddenly, puff! The dry grass burst into flame and a wall of fire raced ar across the ground at an alarming speed. <coughs> grabbing, a, grabbing a slab of well-cooked snake, I ran for the jungle before the fire could cut off my escape route. 
Smashing into the trees, I turned to look back at the scene of devastation I had just escaped. My poor friend the rhino littered the ground in a hundred different parts, and the pack of maniac hyenas that had been following us all day was slinking between the fires and piles of smoking metal. Snarling and quarrelling, they fell hungrily on the snake meat that littered the ground. It reminded, it reminded me of how hungry I was, and I ravenously bit into my snake burger. Then, before the hyenas spotted me, I forced my way through the thick, strong undergrowth and into the depths of the jungle. I kept my eyes and ears peeled for the signs of any new danger. But everything was strangely quiet. My first night in the jungle, trees of every shade of green soared above me, thick and limbless. Their trunks shut away up into the murky heights of the forest canopy. Wherever I could, I followed animal paths through the dense undergrowth. And if my way was barred, I hacked at the ferns and creepers with my penknife. Every now and then, the cry of a distant animal or the nearby rustling of leaves broke the eerie silence of the jungle. <coughs> it gave me jitters. I couldn't help remembering the scary red eyes I'd seen on the other side of the vast plain. And I wished the steam-powered rhino was still at my side. Coming to a clearing, I stopped in my tracks. For here was a wide, clear pool, fed by a babbling stream that looked exactly like the one at the bottom of my garden. It had the same tinkling sound and the same moss-covered stony bottom. Could it somehow be the same stream? I wondered, was I really just a stone's throw from my own back door after all? Maybe my garden was just on the other side of the tangle of bushes, like a portal in a sci-fi story. I ran, my heart beating fast. Made it! I yelled at the top of my voice, crashing through the foliage. Home at last! But... I was answered only by the cries of a band of scarlet parrots that darted through the leaves overhead. It was not a magical doorway to home. I was still inside a jungle, a jungle that could be anywhere in the world or beyond. Suddenly, I felt very tired and flopped down on the bank of the stream. I undid my water bottle and pushed it below the surface, letting it fill to the brim. I held the bottle up to what light there was to check for anything horrible wriggling about, then took a gulp after a gulp of the cool, clear water. Then I started to look for something to spend the night. I decided I'd be safer up a tree, away from any nocturnal beasts that might be roaming the forest floor. So I picked up my rucksack and started to climb one of the giant trunks. The rough bark made it an easy climb and I quickly reached a huge branch that grew out across the jungle floor 30 meters below. The branch was so wide it was easy to walk along, and near the end I discovered a very handy platform covered in grass and leaves. It was almost as if someone had made it specially. Now I'm snuggled down in the thick, musty covering and trying to write down everything that's happened. This is the second night I have not made it home in time for tea, and I wonder how many more nights I'd I'll have to camp out under the stars. Not that I care. I'm having the adventure of a lifetime in this mysterious land, and I feel safer and snug in this jungle nest. But I'm really tired after everything that's happened. I can hardly keep my eyes open. I must get some sleep. If I had known that something was watching me from up in the jungle, forest canopy, I wouldn't have fallen asleep so easily. 
Okay, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe for part six. Bye.